Or is it just Hongsu's reaction? This is why there might never be a seventh generation fighter. By channel Sandbox. Yes, on the Sandbox video, and it's about seventh generation. Now, generation thing is very specific. I think fifth generation is based on stealth. I was like, I was like confused about generations. Like, what does that mean? Who decides generation? But it's something like fifth generation is supposed to be more stealthier. Uh, sixth generation, I don't know, it's supposed to be more like drone technology. Is that what sixth is? How do you know there's not gonna be seventh? Like, there could be some criteria that counts as seventh generation. And I think next, like, Mark, you know, Mark, Mark 2, Mark 3, not as in speed. You know how, like, Mustang Mark 1, Mustang Mark 2, something like that. It, it might as just be that, like, next, next version of some plane. Like, after a few decades, they make another plane with some changes, or there you go, another generation. So they might just make generation after generation, even if there's no big of a difference. But I'm guessing he means based on technology. I don't know. It's going to be interesting. Let's watch it. Splitting fighter aircraft up by generation is kind of a useless practice and likely won't be around for a whole lot longer. At least, that's a growing sentiment within the aerospace community, and to be honest, I'm kind of here for it. You see, fighter generational designations have been around for decades, but there are no universally accepted definitions for these terms, and there are no universally accepted criteria to fall in one generation or another. And what started as convenient shorthand to easily discern between the era in which one fighter was designed and another have now become little more than marketing terms that people, companies, and national governments can use to mean pretty much whatever they want. That's why Russia's Su-57 is so often touted as a fifth-generation fighter, despite having a radar cross-section that's likely comparable to many more advanced fourth-generation jets. This aircraft was designed with a focus on stealth, and as far as Russia's concerned, that's all it takes to meet that fifth-generation criteria. That's also why Northrop Grumman can tout their B-20... I think uh, about Su-57, regardless of its like uh, radar cross-section, the point about it is like, it has that like F-35-22 type wing v wing whatever it's called like you know uh, sideways wing its weapons are probably going to be inside not outside so they're taking measures the specifically compromises even just to make it fifth generation whether it works or not doesn't matter in that way i think it's fifth generation right i don't know one raider as the world's first sixth generation aircraft despite not being a fighter at all Honestly, at this point, calling something sixth generation. Wait a minute, I thought sixth generation means like you're gonna have drones and many other communicative uh, technology, like how F 35 is kind of that. It's supposed to communicate with each other, and that sixth generation is gonna be even more than that. How is B 21s gonna communicate? I, I didn't know it was supposed to like work like that. I thought it was just like, uh, I guess a lot of B 21s can communicate, and like B 21s gonna have drones. It's a bomber, it's gonna have a big ass payload. Why would it need drones? I don't know. It's a lot like calling something organic. Most people don't really know what it means, but it sounds good. And that's why marketing teams use it. The idea of... Oh, I love this photo. I love this photo right here. Oh, B2 or B21. It's gluten-free and 100% organic. There you go. North of Grumman certified. Marketing teams use it. The idea of splitting fighter aircraft up into generations or stages or phases has been around for a long time. But the generational designations for fighters we know today really took root in the 1990s, much more recently than you might think. And as late as the mid-2000s, a lot of organizations and institutions still weren't even recognizing them. In 2004, NASA put out a document that split fighter aircraft up into five stages, starting with straight wing, going to swept wing, transonic, and then the 1960s and 70s. It was wild. But as we now mostly see it today, the majority of fighters in service as we speak belong to the fourth generation, which began in the early 1970s, maybe in 1974 with the F-14 Tomcat. The fifth generation, or stealth fighters, began in 2005 when the F-22 Raptor entered service, and now the sixth generation of fighters, which many people say are differentiated by their ability to fly with AI-enabled drone wingmen, should begin in 2030 or shortly thereafter when the next generation air dominance fighter is supposed to come online. But here's the problem. Depending on how you count them, there are between 40 and maybe 43 fourth generation fighters out there, whereas there are still only five 
fifth generation fighters in service around the world, despite those generations lasting about the same amount of time. And that is in part because fighters can do way more stuff than they used to be able to, so you need fewer different designs than you used to. But it's also because fighters are way more upgradable now. An older fighter design... Mm, I mean, yeah, there's only five, but like, I'm pretty sure like, what was it, Turkey and other play, other countries are also making fifth generation, India is making fifth generation apparently. Uh, what's the name? Hal Amka or something like that? I don't know. But yeah, these uh, futurists are being made out there. Uh, like I said, yeah, he's right about that. Like F-35 is made in a way that you can it can do many jobs at once. But even then, when they when they want to replace that, they can replace that with some kind of a significant difference and call that a seventh generation, regardless of what. But yeah, he's right about the upgrade thing, right? Like they're upgrading F-22 now, right? F-35s are constantly being upgraded. Even they're upgrading F-15, F-16s, like, what is it, Silent Eagle, Strike Eagle, whatever that is, like, uh, F-15, F-16, so, th those are, like, multiple decades old, and they're gonna be there until 2050 or something, so, yeah, 6th generation fighter comes, it might as well be, like, for forever, like, multiple decades, it might not even need to replace it, just upgrade it, I guess. The hardware and software were pretty much married, so if you wanted to upgrade a system, you needed to actually remove physical components from the aircraft and replace them with new ones, and that meant putting the aircraft through a rigorous and expensive flight testing regime after to make sure those changes didn't negatively affect any of the other onboard systems. Whereas today, the F-35 can get over-the-air updates while the pilot is sleeping. And that's just the beginning. The US Air Force and Navy have both been clear that the sixth generation fighters they have in development right now leverage open system software architecture and a modular design, which is a fancy way of saying they are supremely upgradable. That open system software architecture effectively means that the Pentagon owns the code that you use to make changes to the aircraft, so they are no longer beholden to any specific contractors. It doesn't matter who made the last component because the code it uses to communicate with the aircraft is owned by the DoD, so a different contractor can come in to build its replacement. And the modular terminology there means that the physical components in the aircraft are actually made to be pretty replaceable. They work sort of like building blocks, so you can assemble those same onboard components in a completely different aircraft design. Yeah, and mod that's what basically modular means. It's like building a PC when you can replace like, okay, graphic cards, or let's replace it. But in a fighter uh, capacity, wouldn't that make it more vulnerable to have that kind of modular design or like maybe that doesn't matter. I don't know. It would be surprising to see. But if they make it modular, like you just upgrade it slow by slow, whatever you want to replace it, there'll be a time like whole plane might as well be replaced. But like they're not going to call it another generation, is it? And anyway, like he said, generation is just like a marketing technique. It's like, you know... F fifth generation, what is it? Oh, we made it stealthy. How stealthy it is? Not that much, but it's this fifth generation. We call it. You know what? Seven, there will be a seventh generation plane, and India will make it. I don't know. It will have something. Uh, yeah, whatever, right? It will have drones, I guess. Sixth generation uh, American planes, like next generation of air dominance, will have drones. Indian seventh generation will have drones, and it will be called seventh generation. There you go. Design, fielding a fighter that looks nothing like the previous one, but internally is exactly the same. But that also means that you could replace one of those hardware components with an upgraded system as new technology emerges. And as long as it uses that same open... Yeah, basically, Fallout 4 weapon bench, where you start with a pipe, pipe pistol and with a pipe assault rifle or something. There you go. ...system software architecture to communicate with all the other systems on board it should be pretty plug and play, meaning upgrading new fighters will be faster, cheaper, and easier than it has ever been in history. And that means it is really likely that we'll see new fighter designs emerge that will change over time with different iterations fielded with different modular systems on board that aren't different enough to justify being considered an entirely new generation, but are... See, that's the problem I have. I've seen how world works, America works, and people like labels. It's a new thing, it's a new fad. Why? Because it's easier to sell it to people, so people will basically give money, like will justifiably like spend money in some development. So they will be saying, oh, this is, we're building a sound generation, building. it's gonna be awesome, it's this and that, okay, give me like 500 billion dollars or something, like 100 billion dollars, I don't know, whatever the fuck. 
right more budget and need for the sound generation that'd be easier to say than oh by the way we're upgrading the plane we need money so just because how america works it's just show business type of mentality there will be a term called sound generation they will try to do that different from their predecessor and that will very likely become the new standard meaning we're likely looking at what could be the last generation of decade spanning fighters that we may ever see and that's something the air force has been pretty clear about even about ngad with them now reassessing how they want to execute this contract at all arguing that they may even want to field new fighters every five to ten years that doesn't mean fielding new fighter designs like we did with the F-22 and the F-35, but rather fielding a new overall design that leverages those same modular systems that are already tested and already flying in a different shape aircraft or an aircraft of the same shape, but with some new capabilities added. And that really throws a wrench into the whole fighter generational designation concept because most fighter generations are defined by three or four technologies or capabilities that just weren't widespread or available in previous generational designs. But now we will very likely see overall similar designs leverage all kinds of new technologies as time goes by. And to be honest, we are already seeing it. One of the most commonly accepted criteria for a sixth generation fighter today is flying with AI enabled drone wingmen. But it's clear now that the first aircraft that are sure to actually do that will almost certainly be Block 4 F-35s rather than a 6th generation fighter at all. That's not all that weird. We usually see new tech- Huh? F-35s will have upgraded that they will have AI drones. Oh, so that makes it a 6th generation one. Hmm. I think the number at this point, numbers might as well be like the concept was developed later. It was supposed to be replacement of something decade old. That's it. So like F-22 is going to be replaced. When was F-22 made? 2005. When is this being made? 2030. So it's an X upgrade. So that's why 6th generation. Does it have extra capabilities or something of the old? No, not really. It's just something different. You can upgrade other things to be equal to that, but yeah, there you go, 6th generation. Technology is being tested in the previous generation of aircraft, but the F-35 is going to keep flying until at least 2088, meaning it'll spend the majority of its operational life. What do you mean 2088? Is that is that an actual number? No way, they already thought, of, by the way, 64 years in the future. Really? Span meeting that sixth generation criteria. And rather than calling it a 5.5 generation or a 5 plus or a 5 plus plus, maybe we can just acknowledge that this generational designation concept is more about marketing than it is about what fighters actually do. And at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what you call an aircraft. What matters is if it works. As if people consider, oh, by the way, their plane is just 4.5. By the way, this plane is upgrading, it's becoming 4.5. Well, actual military is like, I, I don't give a f what you're talking about. Just, what does it do? Just tell me and give me it. I I'll use it as a tool. I don't care. But yeah, there will be a seven generation plane. India will make it. There you go. It will have like st stealth profile of an elephant and it will have a drone, uh, I guess one or two with it. There you go, seven generation. All right, well, I'll see you next time.